Welcome to this video on how to knit a pair of T-strap shoes similar to some of my favorite Doc Martin shoes. These shoes are designed to fit any of my painted Cricut animals. The shoes I'm knitting today are for my skunk. Because the stripes are such a prominent feature of the skunk, I don't really like to cover them with clothes. But shoes work great because they won't cover her stripes. For this pattern you'll need yarn that's the same weight as the yarn you used for your animal. If you want a different colored sole, then you'll need two different colors, one for the main part of the shoe and another for the sole. If you're working in DK or sport weight yarn, you'll need a little less than 10 grams of each color or a total of around 15 grams or half an ounce. Straight knitting needles that are at least two sizes larger than those you use to knit your animal. In most cases, I find that I can use the size of needles that are recommended for the weight of yarn that I'm using. I use smaller needles when knitting the animals because the animals will eventually be stuffed and I want the stitches to be tight enough that no stuffing will show through. But when I knit clothes for my animals, I want them to be stretchy and looser so that they fit well. You'll also need two small buttons for fastening the straps. And then as always, you'll need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, and some way to keep track of which row you're on. For this pattern, you'll need to know how to do stockinette and garter stitch, basic increases and decreases, and mattress stitch for the seams. Just a few more things before I get to the pattern. Don't let my knitting style throw you off, just knit and purl in the way that's most comfortable for you. Please like and share my videos and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Click show more in the description area for links to more videos and information. Share photos of your completed project on my Facebook page. You can find a link for that in the description area too. And finally, if you'd like a written pattern, I've given links to the shops where I sell them in the description area as well. Okay, let's get started. Here's an example of the finished project. The cast on edge starts at the sole and then works up to the strap and button at the top of the shoe. The pattern is the same for both the left and right shoe until you get up to the straps. Since the left shoe buttons on the left side and the right shoe fastens on the right side, we need to knit straps on the opposite sides. So we'll work both shoes in the same way up through row 18. At row 19, the pattern separates into different instructions for the left and right shoes. Look in the description for links that will help you jump to the sections of the pattern that you're working with. One more note, normally when I have two of the same or similar items, I like to knit them both at the same time, but that doesn't really work very well for this pattern, so I'll just be knitting one shoe at a time. We'll start with the right shoe and then move to the left shoe. So let's start at the bottom of the shoe. These instructions are the same whether you're knitting a left shoe or right shoe. Using a typical long tail cast on, cast on 19 stitches in the color of yarn you want to use for the sole. Knit across these stitches on row 1. Rows 2, 4, and 6 are increase rows. My favorite increase is often called a make one, and it's done by knitting into the stitch just below the stitch you just knitted on the right hand needle. It's a little tricky to see where that stitch is on garter stitch rows, but if you look closely and use your imagination, you'll notice that there are little smiles and frowns. Poke your needle down through the first frown below the needle and pull the stitch up onto the left hand needle. Then, knit into this stitch. On row 2, knit 1, increase 1, and then knit 8. Then increase 1, knit 1, and increase 1 again. Finally, knit 8, increase 1, 
and then knit the last stitch. After row 2, you should have 23 stitches. Knit across on row 3. On row 4, knit 2, increase 1, and knit 8. Then increase 1, knit 3, and increase 1 again. Finally, knit 8. Increase one and then knit the last two stitches. Now you should have 27 stitches on your needle. Knit across on row five. On row 6, knit 3, increase 1, and knit 8. Then increase 1, knit 2, increase 1, knit 1, increase 1, knit 2, and increase 1 again. Finally, knit 8, increase 1, and then knit the last 3 stitches. Knit across on row 7. Now we're going to form a little ridge around the outside edge of the sole. We'll do this by working stockinette for a few rows and then making a ridge out of these rows. On row 8, just purl across. On row 9, continue the stockinette by knitting across. On row 10, we're going to form the ridge by knitting each stitch on the needle with its corresponding stitch three rows below. Here's how you do that. First, notice that the purl side is made up of stitches that look like smiles and frowns. Stick the point of your right hand needle down through the third frown down. Now pull that stitch up onto the left hand needle so that you can work with it. And then, it, and then knit it together with the stitch you would normally knit into. Continue working this way across row 10, knitting each stitch on the needle with its corresponding stitch three frowns down.
At this point, we're done with the sole color. Leave a long tail for sewing the sole seam with and cut that yarn. Reattach the yarn that you want to use for the main shoe and purl across. We're actually working on the right side of the shoe, but by purling into the sole color on the previous rows, we create a nice stitching effect around the base of the shoe. On row 12, purl across. Because of my knitting style and the way that I wrap the yarn on purl rows, I have to purl into the back leg here, but don't let that confuse you. This is just a normal purl row. If you knit in one of the more conventional styles, you won't have to worry about doing anything different with your purl stitches. On row 13, knit across. On row 14, purl across. On row 15, knit across. On row 16, purl across. On row 17, we begin decreasing for the top part of the shoe. Knit 8, decrease 4 times using a left leaning decrease. For conventional knitters, this is an SSK, so you'll need to reposition your stitches and knit into the back. But my stitches are already positioned that way, so I simply knit into the back. Then knit one and decrease four times with a right leaning decrease. This is a knit two together, but I have to reposition my stitches this time. Finally, knit the last eight stitches. With the decreases, you should now have 25 stitches on your needle. On row 18, we create the base of the two openings and the center panel. Purl the first five stitches and then yarn over from the back to the front.
purl the next two stitches, and then pass the yarn over over both of the stitches you just knitted. This makes the cast offs that we'll do next look a little bit neater. Now cast off four stitches. You do this by purling the next stitch and then passing the second stitch on the right hand needle over the one that you just purled. Do that four times and then purl three without casting off. Next, yarn over from back to front again, purl two and pass the yarn over over those two stitches. Cast off four purl wise again. And then purl the last five stitches. When you're done with this row, you should have a total of 17 stitches that are divided for the left, center, and right panels. So you should have 6 stitches, a gap, 5 stitches, a gap, and then 6 stitches. At this point, the instructions are different depending on whether you're knitting the left or the right shoe. The next set of instructions I'll give is for the right shoe. Following that, I'll give instructions for the left shoe. So if you've already knitted the right shoe, be sure to skip ahead to the instructions for the left shoe at this point. Okay, let's knit the top sections of the right shoe. We'll start with the left panel, which includes a strap. For this panel, we'll only be working on the first group of six stitches. On row 19, knit across the six stitches. On row 20, we begin creating a strap. Start by casting on 10 stitches using the knitted cast on. You do this by inserting your needle into the first stitch on the left needle. Wrap the yarn around the needle as you normally would for a knit stitch and pull the yarn through, but don't pull the stitch off the needle. Then transfer the yarn you pulled through onto the left needle so that it's ready to be knitted. That's the first stitch cast on. Follow these same steps until you've cast on 10 stitches. After casting on 10 stitches, you should have 16 stitches ready to knit. Knit the first 9 stitches and then knit the next 2 stitches together. Finally, purl the last 5 stitches. At the end of row 20, you should have 15 stitches. On row 21, we're going to create a small hole at the end of the strap for the button. Knit the first 13 stitches, then yarn over and knit the last two stitches together. On row 22, bind off the stitches in knit until six stitches remain. Purl one stitch and pass the second stitch on the right hand needle over the one you just purled. Then purl the last five stitches without binding off. You should have six stitches when you're done. Purl across on row 23. and bind off all the stitches in purl on row 24.
Cut the yarn here, leaving enough for sewing with later. With the right side facing, rejoin the yarn so that you can work the center strap enclosure. On row 19, knit the group of 5 stitches and turn. On row 20, knit 1, purl 3, and knit 1. On row 21, start with a left leaning decrease, knit 1, and then finish with a right leaning decrease. You should have 3 stitches in this group now. For the next 11 rows, on the wrong side rows, you're going to knit one, purl one, and knit one. Then, on the right side rows, just knit straight across. When you get to row 33, bind off all the stitches in knit. Cut the yarn, leaving enough to sew with. Fold this panel in half, checking that the enclosure is wide enough for the strap, and then with the wrong sides together, sew the bind off row down near row 19, which is the first row of the center panel. Now we work the final set of stitches. With the right side facing you, rejoin the yarn. Knit across on row 19. Purl across on row 20. Knit across on row 21. Purl across on row 22, purl across again on row 23, and bind off in purl on row 24. Cut the yarn, leaving enough for sewing. You can use this yarn to sew the button on. The assembly instructions are the same for both shoes, so let's set the right shoe aside for now and knit the left shoe up to this same point. Rewind the video back to the instructions for rows 0 through 18. When you've finished the sole and base of the shoe, skip ahead, pass the instructions for the right shoe that you just finished, and jump back to this point so that you can follow the instructions for the top of the left shoe. Okay, you should have finished a right shoe, and now you're ready to knit the top sections of the left shoe. We'll start with the left panel, which in this case is the panel where you'll eventually sew a button. For this panel, we'll only be working on the first group of six stitches. Knit across on row 19, Purl across on row 20, knit across on row 21, purl across on row 22, purl across again on row 23, and bind off in purl on row 24. Cut the yarn, leaving enough for sewing the button with later. And just a reminder, 
I often only use a couple strands of yarn in order to sew the buttons on. Now, with the right side facing, rejoin the yarn to work the center strap enclosure. On row 19, knit the group of 5 stitches. On row 20, knit 1, purl 3, and knit 1. On row 21, start with a left leaning decrease, knit 1, and then finish with a right leaning decrease. And now you should have 3 stitches. For the next 11 rows, knit 1, purl 1, and knit 1 on the wrong sides, and then knit across on the right sides. On row 33, bind off all the stitches in knit. Cut the yarn, leaving enough to sew with. Fold this panel in half and sew the bind off row down near row 19, which is the first row of the center panel. Now we'll work the final set of stitches for the left shoe, but in order to get the strap to match the one we did for the right shoe, we're going to have to transfer our stitches so that we can start by working a wrong side row first. So transfer your stitches to the other needle and begin working a purl row. Then with the wrong side facing you, rejoin the yarn. On row 19, purl across the six stitches. On row 20, we begin creating the strap. Start by casting on 10 stitches using the knitted cast on. You do this by inserting your needle into the first stitch on the left needle, wrap the yarn around the needle as you normally would for a knit stitch, and then pull the yarn through but don't pull the stitch off the needle. Then transfer the yarn you pulled through back onto the left needle so that it's ready to be knitted. Follow these same steps until you've cast on 10 stitches and then you should have 16 stitches ready to knit. Knit the first nine stitches and then knit the next two stitches together. Finally, knit the last five stitches. At the end of row 20, you should have 15. On row 21, we're gonna create a small hole at the end of the strap for the button. Purl six, Knit 7, and then yarn over, and knit the last two stitches together. On row 22, bind off the stitches and knit until 5 stitches remain. Then knit the last 5 stitches without binding them off. And you should have 6 stitches when you're done. Knit across on row 23 and bind off all the stitches and knit on row 24. Cut the yarn here, leaving enough for sewing with later. And now we're ready to sew all the final seams. 
using the leftover tails, sew the back seam using mattress stitch down to the stitching and sew. Then switch colors to sew the sole seam. You can turn the shoe inside out and sew the sole so that the seam is on the inside of the shoe. That looks fine, but I'm also going to show you how to use duplicate stitch to get a sole that's very flat on the bottom. Again, you need to be able to notice the smiles and frowns that make up the garter stitch. If you look closely, you can see that the yarn from each row loops in and out of the yarn on the previous rows. And that's what makes the smiles and frowns. We're going to follow these patterns to connect the rows on one side of the sole with the rows on the other side. This is much easier on the rows that sit directly across from each other. I usually try to follow a similar pattern at the back of the sole where it curves, but because you're dealing with both a curve and increased stitches on both sides, it's much harder to understand the stitches. So just do your best until you get to the straight edges, and then I'll show you what to do from there. Okay, so where the straight edges meet, notice how the smiles and frowns are arranged again. On the bottom edge, you're going to go down through a frown, follow the smile over and up through the next frown. Now you're ready to connect with the rows on the top edge. Go up through the smile that's directly across from the first frown you went down, and then follow the frown above it and come back down through the smile that's directly across from the second frown on the bottom edge. So you're connecting smiles on the top edge with frowns on the bottom edge. Following the natural pattern in this way makes the seam not only invisible but also completely flat. When you're done sewing the back and bottom seams, tuck for any areas that need to be tightened. There are enough leftover tails to reach almost any place on the shoe. Then weave in and trim any remaining ends. With such small buttonholes, I often find that I have to divide the yarn strands and only use a couple strands or as many as will fit with the needle through the buttonhole. Pull the strap through the strap enclosure. This might be easier to do while it's on your animal, otherwise it's easy for the strap to pull out of its enclosure. Then fasten the strap to its button 
and you're done. And that's it. Now my skunk has a cute pair of pink shoes. If you'd like to knit yourself a skunk, check out my written patterns for now, and I'll be adding a video showing how to make it as soon as I can. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to like it and subscribe to my channel so you can get notified when I release new videos like the one for the skunk. And don't forget to share a photo of your completed project on my Facebook page. See you next time.